When you watch educational or smurf content, do you ever wonder just what makes these high elo players so capable of winning nearly every game in low elo when it feels like such a struggle to get just a 50% win rate for yourself? The answer is easy. More often than not, you're playing way too nice. You're probably only going for the really easy and simple plays in front of you rather than trying to dig for every little advantage that you possibly can. At Skillcapped, we started this Stop Playing Fair series to highlight some of the ways that challenger players really put the pressure on in the elos of Platinum and below. There's no specific strategy that they use. They just look for any advantage that they may have and push it as far as they can, or every little weakness that their opponents show is immediately exploited. In this guide, we'll once again be looking at some of the ways a challenger stops playing fair and crushes low elo by putting as much pressure on their opponents as possible. And one way in which challenger players stop playing fair is by grinding ranks in the preseason. Most players don't realize when the new season starts that your rank doesn't completely reset, it only soft resets. This is why the preseason still matters. For example, let's say you ended last season in gold. Well, when the new season starts, you'll have to begin your climb from low silver. However, if in the preseason you were able to get to platinum, suddenly when the new season starts, you'll be starting your climb from low gold instead. High level players know to abuse this since there are always insanely overpowered strategies during the preseason that make you climb incredibly quickly. That's why there's no better time than now to use our hyper improvement platform at skillcap.com. We'll be releasing cutting edge strategies you won't find anywhere else all throughout the preseason. We're also backed by a rank improvement guarantee, meaning if you don't significantly climb while using our service, you can claim a full refund. So what are you waiting for? Get a head start on the new season by clicking the link in the description below. To kick things off, we tend to spend a lot of time talking about how to get through tough matchups in top. Very often, you're dealing with a hellish counter matchup or playing through the annoyance of being melee versus a ranged top laner. While you will have to deal with near unplayable circumstances sometimes, so does your opponent. You also get to be the one in the driver's seat very often in top, but we don't see lower elo top laners really abuse their advantages as much as they should in these types of matchups. Well, let's take a look at one simple way that you can instantly win the entire game within the first few minutes by exploiting how weak your opponent is early on. Okay, so we've got our challenger expert Hector smurfing it up as usual. He's playing Yone versus Nasus, a pretty dominant matchup early on. To begin with, one of the first things that he notices is that both junglers started bot side, so they'll both be pathing up top. This is great info as he's already got a devastating plan in mind to punish this Nasus pick. He begins slow pushing the wave, and he's going to do something very important which he even communicates to us. He's not hitting Nasus on purpose. The strategy he's going for involves crashing on the third wave, just like you do during a typical cheater recall. But do you see how Nasus hasn't hit the wave too much and how Hector has a decent minion lead already? Well, if he were to hit Nasus, the entire enemy wave would aggro onto him, which in turn causes the wave to push even faster. This might make the wave crash too quickly, which would ruin the entire game plan. So, in a weird way, it can sometimes be correct to not deal free damage if it ruins your future minion goals. However, this doesn't mean that you can't pretend that you'll harass to zone your opponent off a bit, as he shows here. They don't know that you won't actually hit them, so you might zone them off a minion or two by just pretending to be aggressive. Anyway, as we said, this was all for the eventual goal of getting a massive crash on the third wave. This timing is important because it generally lines up very well with junglers who started bot side, finishing up their route in their top side jungles. We even got a glimpse of Mordekaiser at his blue buff as this is happening. Now, you want to crash the wave and immediately look to invade the enemy jungle. Now, the reason why this timing is so brutal is that your lane opponent cannot help their teammate. If they do, they will miss a ton of farm that you just crashed into their tower. So you can either harass or kill the enemy jungler 1v1 while they are stuck in lane. And if you do come and help, then you can just be annoying and bait them to waste their time putting yourself and your own jungler ahead. That's obviously because the wave that you crashed will die and then slowly bounce back to you afterwards as well. If you have a dominant early game matchup, this is almost always guaranteed to result in a lead if done properly. Anyway, Hector invades by hopping over the wall and finds Mordekaiser finishing the Gromp. He fully commits to the kill, knowing that this puts Nasus in a tough spot. 
After finishing Mordekaiser off, he tries to flash out but gets chased down and it ends up being a one for one trade. Now, this is a really good replay to highlight just how OP this strategy can be because as Hector mentions here, that was pretty much the worst possible outcome he could have had. He found Mordekaiser right as he finished the Gromp and at full HP. That's pretty unlucky. Normally when you invade junglers like this, they may be in the middle of doing Gromp or Blue and they'll be at like 70% HP. It'll be much easier to kill them as they're tanking the buff and lower on health, of course. But the ultimate reason this is good is because of the benefit in your own lane as well. The one for one wasn't great and a mediocre outcome. Usually it's even better though, as we said. But the guaranteed advantage comes from the fact that the wave is now likely on your side of the lane and you're in a winning matchup. This strategy is basically like cheater recalling, but also winning jungle at the same time for your team. Now, Hector just sets up a permanent freeze versus this Nasus, and he's eventually going to score a kill as he has no way to break this horrible wave state. And now the game is pretty decisively over. So to reiterate on when this tactic is viable, here are the key things that you want to look out for. First, you're in a hard winning matchup early where you can crash the third wave. Next, it's ideal to do this when both junglers are padding topside. This way your jungler might react to your invade and help you to harass the enemy jungler 2v1. If you see these conditions, try doing this in your own games and you'll find that you might instantly win the match just three minutes in. Of course, not playing fair and abusing advantages isn't just about cheesing some stuff during the early levels. The whole point is that you think about big weaknesses your opponents currently have and exploit them, unlike most low elo players who just let big game winning moments pass them by. For an example of this later on into the game, let's take a look at another replay of Hector playing set. His scoreline may not indicate it, but he is quite the monster this game. No one can stop him in the side lane from taking towers. Not only that, but he is a massive nuisance in teamfights, basically single-handedly winning them for his team. Anyway, we just wanted to highlight how strong he is for this upcoming decision. Hector and crew are looking for a pick in the enemy jungle as they get spotted and eventually chased off the area. Moments like these are often passed up by players because people tunnel vision way too much on their own perspective of the game. In League, one of the best ways of getting advantages is to always try to put yourself in your opponent's shoes and see the game through their eyes. Look at the mini map and try to think about things from his opponent's point of view. They are chasing very hard to score kills, knowing that they've got the numbers advantage at the moment. This is especially true because Hector knows that they spot his own TF on topside. So, in your mind, you should know that your opponents are feeling confident and very safe in the fact that Hector and his teammates have been chased out and now they're in full control of the area. Therefore, what is something that one of them is likely to feel safe in picking up? The bot lane wave, of course. Not only that, but again, thinking about this from your opponent's perspective. If someone farms that bot wave, they're likely going to stick around for this next wave too because Ash should know that it's coming. She's not just going to sack free farm, right? So Hector knows that he can sneak into this brush and be completely unexpected since his opponents all assume that they have the control of this area. Now comes the important part. This is only unexpected because his opponents in fact do have control over the area and this could very quickly go poorly. So the next step is to scout and see if everyone left this Ash alone. So before he engages on her, he scouts the three people in mid and he even hovers his camera over his own jungle, indicating that he knows that this is where the remaining player, Kha'Zix, likely is. Fully confident that she's probably alone, now he finally comes out of the brush and scores a game winning pick. The reason why is that we're at the 27 minute mark where killing one player is a huge deal since it can lead to Baron or in hips. So after clearing this wave, what do you think the highest pressure play here is? Do you collapse with your team to force a 5v4 fight at Baron, or do you just keep pushing bot alone? Again, try to recall how strong Hector is from the previous footage that we showed you. Anyone who had the immediate thought to go to Baron, well, you're playing way too fair and simple in your games. Defending a Baron 4v5 is tough, but not the hardest thing in the world. How many times have you and your teammates thrown a Baron fight despite having a numbers advantage in solo queue? Things get chaotic when you're tanking the Baron, then you gotta choose to finish or peel off and fight. There's a high possibility of things going wrong, especially with four random teammates. But more importantly, think about it from your opponent's point of view as well. If you go five to Baron, they only have one choice to make. They defend as four. 
There's nothing complicated about it, and it's a very simple situation for your opponents to play out. Sure, they're still at a disadvantage, but there's no hard choice that they have to make, right? Remember that one of the best ways of carrying solo queue is to put the enemy team into uncomfortable situations. By going bottom, Hector is asking his opponents a very difficult question. How do they stop him from pushing and save the Baron at the same time? Can they even stop him, actually? He is quite strong. So do they need to send multiple players? And who do they send? Can they defend Baron with the remaining people who don't go bottom? Do you see just how much complexity and annoyance this adds to the situation for your opponents? Basically, during the mid and late game, don't always assume that forcing Baron with a numbers advantage is the best play. Think about what else you could try to do on the map that might potentially put more pressure on your opponents. In this case, they didn't respond at all and sent four people to Baron, so Hector takes a free inhib off his previous sneaky pick. But this clip isn't done yet, because there's one more good thing to learn from here. After taking the inhib, Hector sees a collapse opportunity where he can pincer the enemy team. Some of his own allies are low, but he thinks this will be a good opportunity anyway. He goes through the mid tower and immediately fights Garen, ultimately trading one for one. Then he clearly proceeds to tilt out of his mind over the fact that his teammates didn't help. This is just a quick lesson about solo queue that you need to always remember. Never go for plays that require competency from your teammates. This is especially true in awkward situations like this one. Caitlyn and Elise are way too scared to help at this low HP, even if they technically could have. Hector is just a challenger player who expects his teammates to be intelligent and to immediately see how good his flank is and then engage without any hesitation. That is obviously not a good call in lower elo brackets, so never go for ridiculous plays like this one in your own games. You should just be happy with the inhibitor that you took because that will likely result in a free Baron anyway. No need to throw the game on a risky play like the one that he went for in your own games. For the final thing we want to talk about in this guide, we want to remind you of just how OP top lane can actually be. A common complaint among top lane mains is obviously their low impact on the rest of the map, especially during the lane phase. That is absolutely true, don't get us wrong, but the role is balanced around the fact that most top lane champions are pretty disgusting. It's especially gross when you're ahead as a top laner because you can start to do really ridiculous things and winning fights entirely on your own. The reason why is because, unlike the other roles, most of the champions in top generally get two to three of the following benefits basically for free. The first is health and resistances. Most bruisers or tanks come with more HP and naturally get health in the items that they build. Plus, they generally get higher base resistances and build items with magic resist and armor fairly consistently. Therefore, you obviously tend to be tankier than most other roles. The second benefit is a lot of easy to get tenacity, making CC against you far less relevant. Top laners will either run the precision or resolve tree in most games. This gives them free access to things like legend tenacity or unflinching for free CC reduction, even if you don't go merc treads, which you often do anyway. And the third benefit is mobility. Yes, not every top laner has good movement spells, but a lot of top laners have really good on-demand mobility spells that let them outplay their opponents fairly easily. Even something minor like Garen's Q is pretty solid as far as mobility goes. A major advantage that you have due to these benefits is that as a top laner, when you have a lead, you are incredibly hard to kill if you space properly around your opponents. Good players will often use this to bait their enemies to waste time and precious cooldowns to give their team the advantage. Now, there are generally three levels to how hard you can bait players to waste time. To discuss all three, let's take a look at a final replay of Hector playing Lilia. For a bit of context, this game is fairly even besides Hector, who is of course pretty fed on the champion. He's well poised to 1v9 this game, abusing the advantages that we just covered. Anyway, a bit later, he's catching some side waves up in top when he notices on the map that both Ash and Ramis are heading up here. Before they arrive, he gets a ward to be able to properly scout what's happening and sees GP is up here as well. Now this is the level one of baiting players for advantages. As we talked about, Hector saw his opponents coming up here, but still made it very obvious that he's invading deep into the jungle. This was to get multiple opponents up here, thinking that he's overextending. However, at this range, he can't be engaged on. This just wastes a bit of your opponent's time, which may give your teammates the opportunity to get something else, like the Herald in this example. Next is level two, where you get a little spicy. Notice how he walks forward a bit, baiting Ramus to continue trying to engage. 
Remember, you are super hard to kill due to your tankiness, tenacity, and mobility. Use how OP you are to bait your opponents to waste even more time in potentially some of their cooldowns. This is very similar to what we just watched Kingen do in those previous examples. And next up is level 3, just be a top laner. We're just going to say it again, most top champions are really OP when ahead, and you can bait your opponents all into their deaths, thinking that they have a chance to kill you. This isn't something that we can teach, but rather it's something that you need to practice if you really want to carry as a top lane main. You might think that this is just a smurfing thing. It's not. If you feel like you have no impact as a top laner when you have a lead, it's definitely because you do not literally practice 1v5ing. This is what your role does. Yes, you are going to look dumb sometimes and throw some leads in your games, but you need to practice really testing just what you can get away with on your champions. Practice it enough and you will unlock the most unfair thing that you can do in solo queue, just being a top laner. It is insane how often you can make plays like these when you're fed as a Jax, Riven, Darius, etc. Anyway, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.